Dave, uh, a very good evening to you. Uh, Douglas, uh, first of all, let's deal with the Celts because I think uh, that could be the big story on the domestic front tomorrow uh, if they beat emerging nomads in what I understand is a double point clash as well. They take the Manx Shield title. In theory, they would, Tim. However, uh, ah. we can we <laughs> can quickly uh, kill this part of the conversation. Uh, that game is now a postponement and uh, that will be played at a date yet to be fixed. Um, Douglas having a few uh, personnel problems this weekend. We've got a combination of things. We've got to start the Six Nations. They're carrying a big sick list as it is. And uh, it's obviously in the middle of the ski season too. So uh, the first team under a little bit of pressure. So uh, they've pulled the plug on the second team game. That's going to be pushed back to, like you said, a date yet to be fixed. And that gets agreed by the uh, powers that be though? Uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah, I prefer the clubs to play when they want to play. There's no specific reason why it has to be done this weekend. Uh, I'll it, let them go with it. I can tell it. you, Tony Mappham's looking a little bit quizzical on that one. Uh, he has a much more congested <laughs> fixture list than me to manage and... Uh, that will be a, a bit of a problem. But uh, both clubs are in agreement. We don't have any issues with it. Let's move on. OK, well, we'll deal with the Manx Shields. Southern Nomads, Ramsey B. Uh, it should be a comfortable win there for Southern Nomads. And Nomads, the, the real two big games in the Manx Shield is Southern Nomads versus Douglas Celts and Douglas Celts versus Southern Nomads. Celts, those games have been played. Celts have won them both. So really what the Celts are doing is running down the clock. Uh, picking off the uh, the lesser games as and when we get those two in that that will decide it. But Southern Nomads, I guess in theory, if they keep the pressure on, a win against Ramsey B should come for for them very easily. Uh, that will still keep them in the frame if for any reason Douglas Celt slip up. But uh, I don't really see that happening. And the other game, Western Vikings against Castletown, quick winner there. Yeah, uh, probably. I fancy Castletown. Let's look at uh, North One West. Douglas away at Stockport. Uh, not much uh, between them in the league, but obviously Stockport home advantage, and they are slightly higher than Douglas. So it's yeah. a tough, tough afternoon, maybe. It is, it is, it is. Uh, away from home is never good, Tim, as, as we know. And uh, what we're looking at here is Douglas are on the, on the back end of a very poor run of results. I think they've won twice since November. Uh, it isn't good for them. They're, not, they're down in ninth position. Uh, Stockport have got a big uh, a big incentive this week. If they pick up five points against Douglas, they're potentially up to third place. Uh, so uh, the Douglas have, like I said, struggling with personnel. There's different players injured. Call-ups from the second team. Uh, Danny Creer has been called up. Bryn Snellgrove's been called up. Um, we've got Ott Crussell being called up. So the second team players being brought into the frame, that's what they're there for, to be fair. Uh, they're there to develop course, their skills yeah. and get up to league standards. So uh, they've been pulled up towards the first team. Uh, I'm not going to say it's just going to be a scratch first team, given that they kicked Ramsey's backsides last weekend. But uh, it's not full strength by any by any stretch of the imagination. And going away to a quality outfit like Stockport, who are potentially chasing a promotion yeah. finish, uh, I think there's only going to be one winner there. I noticed in the uh, paper the build-up for Lancashire Cheshire 1 was that Ramsey are playing the one side uh, below them. But don't be deceived on that front because they've uh, had quite a, a big points deduction and they have won two games Ramsey still winless yes indeed Tim and uh, it, you know the, the the side of the players are very optimistic I meet and chat with them every week uh, I know how enthusiastic they are and how committed they are um, results just aren't coming there's a variety of reasons for that uh, sometimes the opposition is significantly better than we were expected sometimes it's uh, just a lack of experience lack of finesse the guys are improving week by week. A win will come. I don't see it tomorrow, though. Uh, there's a very much a makeshift backline that's gone away because of Ramsey's mounting injury list. Uh, I don't think uh, I've seen a backline like it. We've got two back rows playing in the centres, so uh, hmm. uh, two 18-year-old back rows for that matter. So uh, there's a couple of young guys out there who are in in their spurs. Um, it's going to be a big game for them tomorrow. It could be a revelation. It might work exceptionally well, but it could be a total disaster as well. Chances are it's going to be somewhere in between the two. They're going to play well in patches. I think Birchfield at home should win. Uh, let's have a look at both the Vagabonds games. Uh, the men in Division 2 are playing our Old Bedians and the women, uh, a name that uh, is quite famous in rugby circles, uh, northern circles particularly, Preston Grasshoppers. Yeah, and, uh, taking the men first, uh, they've got a top four finish guaranteed now in uh, Lancashire Cheshire 2. So they'll be going into the promotion playoff. That's supposed to start in two weeks' time. Uh, I don't see that happening because Bedians are three games adrift. 
Uh, and I think Oswestry have got a couple of games in hand as well. The, the league are probably going to need those games to be played out first. So no telling when phase two of the league season might start for Vagabonds. Team named this afternoon, very strong lineup. Uh, I don't see Bedians beating them at home, but uh, last year I watched the Bedians game. It was raining, the pitch was horrible. It was a virtual swamp up there, even at Bella Fletcher, and uh, it finished 8 3, I think. It was a real thriller. <laughs> so you've not much uh, desire to go back? Uh, no, well, we're covering that one tomorrow. It kicks <laughs> off at 12.15. We'll be there for Saturday Live. Uh, we're looking for Vagamons to take a home win. That should push Bedians out of the qualification for Phase 2. So I think Bedians have got the bigger carrot, but Vagamons will want to finish on a high. And points earned in Phase 1 are carried into Phase 2 as well. So, uh, yeah, good uh, a good home win will be needed. And the women looking for a win too? Yeah, the, the girls, this is only their second game in 2020 they were away at um, sale 1861 on the first weekend and got a bit of a trimming uh, a lot of players missing at Vagabonds ladies we've had Corinna Daly out for a while uh, Lauren Ellison's been sidelined with uh, an ankle injury for a while uh, those players start to come back into the mix that team's going to get stronger and Preston Grasshoppers I think have got one win from eight uh, Vagabonds at home should beat them quite comfortably and uh, we should see them move up maybe to as high as third place